Welcome back to the channel. This video is an update for Bitcoin as Bitcoin selling flips yet again as crypto buyers target the next resistance levels. Let's take a look at that on the charts where the market had crashed to yesterday, where it's flipped to today and what prices we're looking at for the majors and of course update some of that major news that has been coming through. Thanks so much for all of your support on the like button. Will Bitcoin hit 50,000 before it hits 40,000? Smash the like button if you think we'll get to 50,000 first. It works on Twitter. Let's play a game with the like button. It's so boring just asking the same thing. Hit that like. So let's play a game with it. All right, let's dive in to the video. But first, thanks to today's sponsor, SwiftX, Australia's best cryptocurrency exchange. You can also stake your cryptocurrencies over on SwiftX like the big names Solana, Cardano, Polkadot, and up to 75% on Axie Infinity. It's, it's been going absolutely gangbusters over the last few weeks. So go and check it out. Link in the top of the description. But if you're not in Australia, check out Bybit. There's up to $3,000 of sign up bonuses. All you have to do is start depositing with 10 bucks. Link is in the description. So for the fear and greed, 52, like I said yesterday, still looking at something like a Switzerland type event here. Everything is neutral. Now, yesterday, last week. So I take that as a reasonably okay sign for March, April, well now we're in April leading into May, that at least the markets are just trying to get to that next resistance level to test whether the bears will take control again or if the bulls still have more ammo left in them. What I'm talking about is what we've been covering for the last several weeks. Uh, first up, I'm going to look at crypto total market cap, so all of the cryptocurrency market caps uh, combined into this one beautiful looking chart here. We were looking at this uh, over the last couple of weeks at least being at around 14 to 15% from the next resistance level. And you can see that we've been starting to climb towards $2.25 trillion. Just getting a small rejection at the moment. So the daily high at the moment is around 2.15, just sitting closer to that 2.1. So provided we stay above the major level, 1.5 trillion, which seems like a long way away at the moment, uh, that's the 50%. So this is looking all right for cryptocurrencies. So I would think that we're still on track for some sort of test of 2.25 as the market still climbs up. The trend is with the bulls. The swing is up. The trend is up. So we've got to keep going with the trend. Should we get a rejection? Obviously, we don't want to go much further than that 1.7 or $1.8 trillion level to remain bullish and just give us some more time for accumulation throughout 2022. I know I sound like a broken record on that, but that's the way it works or the way I'm seeing it in terms of a macro picture. It takes more time just to play out. But on the daily, things can get a little bit choppy and churny. So that's why we continue to come back here on the channel and update. With that said, make sure you've subscribed and hit that bell notification icon as well. So we're currently only 6% away from the next resistance level. So we've been covering this, as I said, from around that 14% because it gives us an idea of where we might expect the altcoin season to find a little more testing grounds. So basically just potentially getting some rejection. I know I often see comments of people saying, you're so bearish, this thing is so bullish. I'm like, that's true. You know, the market is going up, the trend is up. But remember what happens throughout these markets. You can go back and test anything in history. But I know the majority of people don't want to test, but the viewers, you guys, you do do your testing. You check the markets. I see your comments. You can see these markets run down, obviously, and then they start to test the upside. And once they've gotten to a point that they feel like that's enough for them, then they come back to the downside just to test if the market has gotten rid of all of the sellers. So the sellers have left. And that's when we know that we're ready to move on again. So that's why we always get these moves from highs to lows, the swings, the titles with the sellers in control, then the buyers in control. And it's just a matter of a time frame that personally that I'm looking at. And of course, every other investor is looking at as well. You're looking at short term or we're looking at a longer term picture here. So now we are 6% away from our next resistance level. Let's see how that works out with Bitcoin and Bitcoin dominance. So yesterday's video, we were looking at the market just starting to fall past these levels. It started to crash and basically got to a nice support level of around 44,000 US dollars. You can see from the chart here that that was a previous level that it's come back to over the last six to 12 weeks or so. And so that's acted as support for now. That was yesterday, perfect support bounce, you can see there. And today we've flipped, the buyers have taken control and we're trying to work our way back through all of the selling that happened last week. So the first target on a short term time frame 
is just above where the market did begin to break down. So that was the 2200 bar, so 31st of March. And the high price, I'm just looking at the top here, is at 47,600. So ideally, what we wanna see is market get back above, hold above that level, and then those highs at $48,000. So we're not too far away from that at the moment. And exactly, we are 3% from that level and also 2.3% from these highs. So not doing too bad after a nice flip from uh, the bears taking control, which seemed to be the profit taking that we were looking at, and then that nice bounce back. All right, the next level, the next uh, macro level that I'm waiting to see how Bitcoin acts, how it responds to that level is, of course, that 50 to 52,000. And that's about 10% away from our current prices. So the short term is interesting. It's basically like the news and we just see what's going on. Are the bears in control? The bulls in control? Who's selling? Who's buying? As opposed to what's actually going on in the news headlines because obviously the price has to be bought and sold and that's what we're watching. And now we're looking at the macro about 10% away from those uh, those next levels because we're currently trading at 46,500. Next levels, 50, 52,000. I'm very excited to see how Bitcoin reacts if we can get to that point. As for the dominance, remember this from the last couple of weeks, ETH run building up. The dominance keeps dropping. Bitcoin's dominance is subsiding against the rest of the cryptocurrency market. We did get a little mini altcoin season through here. Of course, Ethereum has been outshining Bitcoin. If this was to go up, then of course, Ethereum's run would have exhausted and uh, shows over. But notice something else here. We are getting closer to our 50% level of 41.6. So basically 41.5%. Should we see a bounce here, then this will put a stop to probably the mini altcoin season and of course Ethereum's run as well. Speaking of Ethereum's run, it's only 1.5% away from closing above the resistance level. So this is the downtrend, the mega major downtrend that the rest of the cryptocurrency market has been on and of course Ethereum as well. Down to January from the tops of November, you can see we're getting close. The market's finding some resistance at the moment over the last few days. So we know we're starting to uh, get to a point that maybe more sellers are coming into the market for the short term. So Ethereum is obviously stronger uh, factually because you can see how close we are to that 50%. For Bitcoin, the 50% level from the tops is about 7% away from the current price. It's about 10% away. As for Ethereum, it's about 1.5% away from closing above that major resistance level, and it has already pierced that resistance level. So Ethereum in a much stronger position. We'll have a look at ETH BTC as well on that chart because it is winding up for something big in a macro sense. But first, let's have a look at some of the news headlines. This is the big stuff that the crypto market has been waiting on. It's been rejected again. SEC denies Bitcoin spot ETFs from Kathy Wood's ARK Invest. So Kathy Wood's big into the technology stocks and technologies in general, of course, um, with Bitcoin, Tesla stocks, etc., And then also 21 shares has also been rejected as well. So we're looking at the rejection order. The SEC said firms had not sufficiently met the requirement to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and protect investors and the public interest. Okay, so that's why they rejected it. So again, back to the drawing board. Grayscale's CEO, whose own firm is set to receive a decision. So the next decision on the next spot Bitcoin ETF is in early July, said all options are on the table when asked if he'd consider filing a lawsuit against the SEC. So these spot Bitcoin ETF applications have taken a very long time. And I think a lot of them are getting a little bit annoyed that nothing is going through at this point. Crypto markets, the crypto sphere was expecting some sort of spot ETF acceptance last year. And that may have caused part of the energy to just spill out of the market as well. You know, this is something that has been building up and we're waiting for this spot ETF, but we're only getting futures ETFs. And here we are right now. So wait and see how we react to these next levels. As always, with a macro view, uh, I'll leave a link to the uh, four-year cycle video at the end of this one. Macro views are much different to short-term views. I'm still expecting that we go up and test some of these major levels and then have a bit of a pullback, whether it's all the way back to the previous lows or further or higher. Yes, up, down or sideways, I get it. But the point is we need to test some higher levels first and then see where this next point comes in. Is it in this middle zone? Is it below? Is it higher? That is the rating for the next stage. Is it strong or not? 
And the purpose of that is then I can say for my own investing, you guys do you, I say, well, it's hold up, it's held up higher, therefore the market is stronger, prices are low, and we're starting to move higher. That gives me confidence to go in heavy. I can wait because I'm a more macro investor than trying to buy all of the little dips all the way down. That's how it's used. Back to the news and the EU parliament votes to impose KYC on private crypto wallets. The Econ and Libby, I'll call it that, committees voted to approve a proposal that would require cryptocurrency services, service providers such as exchanges to collect personally identifiable information from individuals who trans transact more than a thousand euros. So essentially anything you do on exchange we want to know who it's going to and basically who owns that address. More than a thousand euros. So there's not much to it. I know here we're at something around 10,000 Aussie dollars. Unhosted wallets refer to non-custodial wallets. Exactly what we looked at there. Things like your ledger and your treasure. They still want to know who they belong to as well. Brian Armstrong, CEO of Coinbase, basically is saying it's not their fault. But in other tweets, he's also said, get your money off exchanges if you want the privacy and the anonymity. You want bullishness? Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We give you the hopium free bullishness. Investment Bank City is bullish on the metaverse, predicts $13 trillion economy. I mean, look, I think if this was said in the bull market, this would go absolutely nuts. You know, this would be picked up and it would be splashed across all of the headlines because now we're in a neutral market as we've seen from the fear and greed. You know, people aren't that bullish, aren't that bearish then this sort of just gets kicked along until the bull market comes back. This news, I am sure, re will recirculate in the bull market. But we are seeing it and hearing it now on April 2nd. Investments bank City said in a Thursday report that the metaverse could reach through 13 trillion by 2030. It'll take time. And of course, it needs to be built out a lot more. But 13 trillion, pretty decent. USDC reserves will be custodied with BNY Mellon says Circle. So it's a $40 billion old school traditional finance bank in the US, USDC stablecoin issuer. So Circle issues the USDC. They're valued at $9 billion. They've chosen BNY Mellon as their custody for the reserve. So they will be holding the USD and that'll be backed one to one so they say, with USDC, unless they change it in their policies. And some big bullish news for Solana and Cardano. So CME Group, it's basically your Chicago futures exchanges. They are looking at some futures for Solana and Cardano. That's basically all they have said. But of course, media, we need to turn this into a pretty long article. All they have said is we are looking at it. And I'm not going to go into any more detail than that because that's essentially all they have said because their clients are requesting anything outside of the top two. For example, Solana, Cardano. Let's take a look at their prices. For example, Cardano hitting 50%. Look at the closes on a macro view. We're on a weekly. Last week closed just below 50% at $1.18. The 50% is $1.19 on this chart. And we're currently sitting at $1.187. So $1.187. Last week, almost dead on to the same price. So this is a resistance level at the moment for Cardano holders, for ADA holders. Ideally, we want to get a hold of, uh, close above the 50% and then some consolidation for the next move. You can see that a lot of these charts, there's some bullishness coming into the space. So we're breaking down trends. So it doesn't mean that we're going to fly to new all-time highs. Pers my personal view is that's not going to happen. But the downtrend is getting broken on a lot of cryptocurrencies, just like Solana, which I often get requests for. Solana, ETH, also um, touching some new highs at the moment. Yesterday's video, we're looking at Solana getting above step one here, which is about 0.04 of an ETH. Bounced nicely off 50%. We'll continue to track this, but Sol USD has broken above the 50% level. So that's $135. The next critical level for Solana, I'm targeting around that 165 to 175. So call it 170, $170 for a nice easy round number. You can see that this yellow line right here in the past has played as support and resistance since the first major all-time high in September. 
and the market crashed under, rejected, and then broke back above, use it as support, use it as support again, and then broke under. So that's why I'm looking at 170 as a pretty critical key level. Now that it's broken above 130, that's a good sign. Ideally, we got two days to go until the weekly close. The close needs to be above that 130 for that strength to maintain or more strength and then target the $170 level. The good news, like we looked at yesterday, the trend, the downtrend has been broken. It was absolutely crushed since November and it's good to see that the downtrend has been broken. So we'll see whether we can go up, fall back on the 50% before we take off again or we head back under and just take our time to rebuild before uh, Solana works its way higher into new all-time highs. Let's take a look at Ethereum versus Bitcoin. We looked at this a few weeks ago to give us an idea of how long the alt season, the mini alt season might last. And in particular, just looking at the move on Ethereum, how long that could last against Bitcoin. So you can see these blue uh, examples back here, just looking at how long the moves down were in weeks and then how long the re uh, relief rallies were in weeks again. So we see some moves down and then how long did that last? So it's easier to see it on a bar chart with just one clean color. And in this case, we have two bars on the way up before the market resumed the downtrend. We had three bars up before the market resumed the downtrend and which was then finished before it moved again nine bars down, six bars up. So essentially that's what I've gone through here and had a look at how long does the relief rally tend to last on average for Ethereum against Bitcoin? Because obviously we look at the dominance and we also see if Bitcoin dominance is going down, then people get excited to go and gamble in cryptocurrencies. So Ethereum had a rally of four weeks and then it went down again for four weeks. Three weeks up, took off or basically went down for that period and had a nice straight run of 16 weeks into the low. We had 16 weeks down before the market then turned around and went up again. So where are we currently at? Well, we are up one, two, three weeks. So anywhere between one and about four weeks, we did have an outlier of about six weeks up, could be the end of the turn. That doesn't mean we have to go beneath the old lows. It just means that maybe we'll see some cooling off for a period of time before the market picks up steam again. And it looks like we might get there this week or in the next week, week and a half, for ETH against Bitcoin and then come to test the 0.078. That's what we had on the chart for the last few weeks. It has bounced off nicely from the uh, uptrend and looking to test that level again. And you can see this really starting to build up against the Bitcoin value, which could take off and basically really outpace Bitcoin when the next season comes along. I'm excited to see what happens with Ethereum against Bitcoin over the next one to two weeks. We are coming towards the end of that relief run just based on history. Of course, this can go a lot further than what we anticipate, but at the moment, it's looking likely we'll probably get somewhere around that three, four, five, six weeks up before we see some sort of correction. That, of course, gives us a bit of an insight as to what might happen in the altcoin season and whether the money starts to flow back into Bitcoin for Bitcoin to have that next leg, or it gets goes over into stable coins for people to hold on to their profits. Speaking of profits and getting them off exchanges like the CEOs have advice to do, check out the link to Ledger, it's in the description. There's also a video in there with my top five cryptocurrency wallets. Go and check that out after this video. Like and subscribe, Bitcoin going to 50K, hit that like button. See you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.